all right what's up guys so right now i want to talk about microsoft's very brief ploy to double um xbox live's annual subscription price so as you guys know i am a very very avid gamer and it's my top hobby it's not and it's not even close and so i've had xbox and playstation both consoles for as long as i can remember right and as you you know would accurately assume i've had to pay for both subscriptions because that's you know how it's been um for some time now and this is one of the more questionable decisions by a business that I've had the pleasure or lack thereof of coming across. It's, it's like, especially when you take into account how Microsoft has not really done too much to, you know, win this race against Sony. Um, it, it's, it's like you're... Microsoft and Sony equally, you know, I, I have to be, I have to be fair, and I have to be fair where it counts. They, thus far, um, with current gen, they've done a abhorrent job at getting their customers, um, their products. I have been trying to get a PS5 since the day that it has released. And I have had no luck whatsoever. I haven't even been close. Right? And now, Sony, Sony's obviously going to get more leeway here because in recent memory, they've had, um, you know, they've had, for overall, nothing short of critically acclaimed, well-received first-party games that have come out. PlayStation 4 in the last generation sold incredibly well and they've just been very they they they've been multiple steps ahead of the competition for some time now, right? And so as a consumer, you're you're willing to you know, cut some slack, but as far as this current console generation has been right the few months that we're into it they've both been terrible and that's an understatement but that is another topic for another day now microsoft had the fucking bright idea to double their annual subscription price now i've been paying 60 dollars for xbox xbox live or sometimes i do the three month 24 uh, dollar option for as long as i can remember now microsoft on the other hand right in contrast to sony they have had very few hits as far as last generation's concerned in my estimate the only thing that saved xbox one was the improvement over the standard uh model of the xbox one to the s which is the one that i had right and backwards compatibility and then if you want to throw in the 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 perks and the and the uh you know the uh features of game pass you can throw that in there but those are the only things that in my mind i would cite for why xbox one was even relevant right so now when ps5 so far within this current generation has been by far and away more well received you go and do this so um within a couple days or so they took back you know their plans to do this but at that time they were planning to double xbox lives uh annual subscription price to 120 dollars and then i believe the three month was going to be increased to 30 and the one month was going to be 15 dollars annual now it, it just it, it's kind of mind-boggling why you would do this when you don't have too much goodwill as it is 
coming off of last generation into this generation. And it's just like, what the fuck are you thinking? Like, do you want Sony to win? Like, they're doing so poorly that they're making Nintendo get second looks. I, I, I'd argue that, right? Now, they obviously came back and took it back. But it's like, this wasn't even a good idea in the first place. And it makes you think, you got all of these people in all of these executive positions. They're supposed to be well-educated. And, and they're supposed to have a ton of qualifications and degrees and shit like that. And it's like, you're making stupid-ass mistakes that regular, everyday people saw coming. You know, your average guy that works at McDonald's could have dodged this bullet, right? And it's just like, what the hell were you thinking? This is stupid. Like, you didn't even need to have to take this back in the first place if you even thought about it. Five now, I'm gonna go on a limb here and I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate, right? Now, because with everything, I consider myself, I consider myself to be someone who's very adept and um, capable at, at deeply contextualizing and analyzing situations and not reacting to them straight off the bat. So I thought about it and I was like, the only conceivable reason that somewhat rational that they could have had for wanting to do this is to push Game Pass. And to be fair, Game Pass is very, um, very promising. It's got a ton of features. I believe Game Pass Ultimate is $15 a month. There's over 100 to 200 games on there, reputable games, good games, games that you'd want to play, right, on there. Um, and I believe you get, you get, you still get deals and stuff in the $15 option comes with live as is and that's fifteen dollars a month so it and and on top of that you get the i think it's the first three months for a dollar now that's 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 great right there but you're pigeonholing your own consumers into wanting into buying it because you're gonna have two sides you're gonna have one side that just gives in and pays for it anyway even though they don't want it or you have the other side who consists of people that may or may not have been xbox loyalists but now they're like i'll just go to playstation so i don't have to deal with that bullshit they're still only charging sixty dollars right and while that could somewhat prove to be successful on the back end, the caveat is, what happens if Nintendo and um, Steam, possibly, and Sony, what about when they start implementing their Game Pass equivalents? Now, Sony has PS Now, and that's not really the same thing. PS Now is, I think, for um, Xbox 360, PS3 generation stuff. That's not for current and... Um, relevant first party games right so it's like what happens when they get on the ball like xbox is only killing it in that department because they were the first to do it and they implemented it well right but you're not gonna have much of a debate when the when the, when your competitors implement it and they're not making you pay an arm and a leg for the system that was already implemented. Because $120 a year for Xbox Live? That's bullshit. And I was one of the people that defended Xbox Live because I, I do think currently it's a better platform than PlayStation Plus. I think that the monthly games are better. You get better deals. And it's just a better platform. Like Xbox Live has always been the best online first party marketplace for out of Nintendo, um, Microsoft, and PS, PS, uh, PlayStation, but it's like, this was such an unnecessary mistake that it's like, no wonder you guys are fucking up already in this console generation, you guys already, you know, had years before this COVID year of 2020 to make enough Playstations and Xboxes 
for, you know, scalpers to not really play much of a factor, but then you hit us with this bullshit. So, as you can tell in my voice, this is something I'm very passionate about because you could have done I am a die-hard gamer. I know so far the only thing you guys see me play is Destiny, but trust me, I'm well endowed within this hobby, and it's just like, this was so unnecessary. I, I can't really stress that enough, but um, let me know what you guys think about it, you know? Um, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed, but that I'm, but I'm not again. So, you know, they rescinded it, you know, no harm, no foul, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, anyway, let me, let me know what you guys think. All right. See ya.